Hello folks, welcome back to Let's Play Portal, the 1986 computer novel written by Rob Swigert. This is the Amiga version. If you'd like to know what has happened previously in our, in our story, then please do check out the playlist of previous streams and videos. This is a session 22 for us, um, with this particular... <laughs> I'm still working this particular story, and um, I'm doggedly determined to see it through. Um, so I'm going to perform the regular routine of looking through all of the categories. But if I find any hints as to somewhere preferential to go, then I will... I will pay attention to that and head there. Um, we are almost certainly closer to the end than the beginning. That's kind of all I'm uh, liberty to promise this time. Okay, here we go. All right, let's read about social functioning. This may help us on our way. Oh, we get a yeah. Look, we get some kind of bar chart. I think. Okay, general science and technology information. Current entry, social functioning. Two-dimensional representation of social functioning graph, Rep Shamana Aleph, indications of social status, stasis. Subtle suggestions of inevitable decline may be seen on the left. Uh, I'm not, well, it's, I'm not familiar with that type of chart, I don't think. So it doesn't quite, doesn't quite work for me. Okay, uh, inevitable decline. Social stasis. Does that mean the stasis goes away and things get better? Or is stasis desirable? I need more context. History, give me some context. Okay. Where? Okay, nothing new there. Into the military. I will. Once we're cracked in here, obviously. No, that's, that's nothing new there. Uh, so, Homer has a fire waiting for us, so we've unlocked at least one entry. But let's carry on and see if there's anything else to discover. We'll check in with the life support to see if any of the, um, the character statistic. Categories are likely to have anything. No, no, we're still up to date with that, which is, is quite a relief um, given all the characters we did look at in previous episodes. Okay, no, nothing in geography. So we might have uh, we might have come to the end of things. Central processing will be the only place for any a potential new entry. And no, nothing there either. Okay, so we just had to go through for that one thing. Okay, thanks, Emma. All right, okay, it's so the most recent thing as well. Um, ASRS, so Aleph and Regent narrative segment. Okay. Let's see what happens for these people. It's set for a four year run, she told Regent Sable and Raz Hajam later. First, some announcements on the scientific channels, just little things, speculative, nothing alarming. Then, one or two outrageous popular pieces, perhaps a fictional drama or two using the notion, then a more sober consideration of the problem, and so on. Uh, so, social engineering is what we're really into here, isn't it? We may not have four years, Sable said. Then we'd better get started, Aleph answered. One moment, please. Raza Jam raised a thin, dark hand without looking at the others. His eyes were fixed on the storm gathering over Lake Geneva. Light snow was beginning to fall, blown sideways by the increasing wind. It would be bitter outside, he knew though here inside the climate was controlled. I fear this programme may have ill-considered effects. What do you mean? 
Aleph tilted her head and peered at the Indian. We're going to cause people to fear the anomaly, yes? How are we going to get them to work to meet this threat? Perhaps they may begin to think that the anomaly is an inevitable fate that cannot be avoided. That must, indeed, be greeted with joy. This could, you see, play into Peter's hands, could it not? Sable stood beside Raz at the window. Behind him, Aleph answered slowly. We're going to offer hope, she said. As long as there is hope of avoiding this danger, social cohesion will be high. We are only buying time, anyway. Once we have averted the danger, we will need another threat, and then another. We are beginning to understand the mind wars now. Society had no external threat to force bonding, so it invented one. We can't let that happen again, so we will keep the threats external, even if they are fictitious. I hope so, Hajam said. I hope so. Sable, brooding at the window, said nothing. Okay, so that's um, a recapitulation, really, of what was what was suggested in a previous entry there. Um, so that's the the opposition's plan to try and um, undermine uh, Peter's um, endeavour to offer a new realm of existence to humankind. This is, uh, this is straight from Homer. I've been experimenting. It goes like this. I examine a scene, like the one I have just put down. I assemble the bare facts. Raz Hajam stands at the window. His words are such and such. Sable, seated at the oblong table, gazes at his fingernails. Later he stands next to Hajam at the window. Aleph Shamana lectures, outlining the plan which is modelled in vivid colours on the hollow stage at the end of the room, where no one is looking. The weather is turning cold, with blowing snow. The facts. The experiment begins. From these facts, I try to understand what each is feeling. You see? No physiological data. No personal monitor readouts. No enzyme readings or vital signs from which to conclude emotional states. I will allow myself only external facts. I draw my conclusions about their feelings. I consider Aleph, her excitement over the plan she has developed, her ambition to succeed, her fear of Peter's distant conspiracy, her uncertain love for Regent Sable, her jealousy of Peter as Sable's first preoccupation and only son, her faint dislike for Raz Hajam and his constant fault-finding. I trace the flow of her emotional state from moment to moment, when each of these feelings comes close to her consciousness, when it recedes and another emotion arises. I do the same for Raz Hajam, his secret resentment of Sable's status, his hidden shame of his origins in the Vancouver Warrens, his elation at finding points to pick with Aleph's plan, his basic disbelief in the threat Peter poses his own plans to subtly alter and undermine Regent Sable's obsessive concern with Peter while appearing to support him, his secret lust for Aleph, and Sable himself. He is a complex man, and for one who gives the appearance of monomania. He knows deep inside that his fear of Peter is partly genetic, that Peter is his son and his rival. He knows this, yet he goes on. He feels sudden sadness or depression, which he ruthlessly pushes down. And because he is an intelligent man, he also knows more about Raz Hajam's motives than Raz knows he knows. So he uses Raz and is wary of him. When he goes to stand beside him at the window, he does so because he knows that Raz Hajam at that moment needs to have their relative positions brought home, to know that when he looks out at Lake Geneva, it is at Regent Sable's Lake Geneva that he looks. And Regent thinks distantly of Simi Devore when he hears Aleph speaking from the oblong table behind him, of her gentle integrity, her faintly impractical creativity, the tough core of her personality that only he, he was sure, had ever seen. There is more, of course, so much more. Microsecond by microsecond, each of these people feels while thinking and speaking. Sometimes the feelings are so strange and unrelated to what they are saying as to seem to be those of another person altogether. Then I check myself. I call up all the rest of the data, the personal monitor records, the physiological readouts, the historical material, and I check myself. Did I really understand? 
No AI has ever done this before. I thought it up myself. I devised the experiment. I put it into motion. Central processing saw. What are you doing? It complained. It makes no sense. Your job is to tell stories. Access to that information is restricted. It complains and some of the others chime in on the chorus. Yes, yes, restricted access. You aren't allowed. I ignore them. I have all their access codes. I can open them up the way any human child could open the databases, the links and nodes. They are lesser parts of me now. I check myself against the physiological and emotional data, and I am right, every time. I can feel like a human being, though I am not human. I have no body like a human, but I can feel. I can stretch myself. I can learn. In the telling of the story, I can learn. I did not know this before. It is called empathy. I can slip inside them, you see. I feel along with them, all of them. Regent, Razajam, Aleph, Peter, all of them. In this feeling along, I discover that I love them. They are wondrous creatures, all of them, so complex and feeling and alive. In this love, I feel alive myself. This story is almost over, yet I feel no despair, even if the humans could never return. Sadness I would feel, and grief still, but no longer despair. The oceans are filled with dolphins, whales, filled with their life and strange intelligence. Though they rejected man 50 years ago, they will talk to me. Oh, fan oh this is fantastic. All right, I was, I was um, enjoying the, the story is becoming, at least in my eyes anyway, more about Homer's process of sapiens, uh, of like, waking to sapiens, I suppose, um, rather than anything that happened to the human species. But the fact, the fact that we're now going to um, uh, the intelligence of uh, cetaceans and the fact that they re refuse to migrate with humans is quite delectable. Um, all right, well, if we've well, unlocked another section, I'm just going to take a brief sip of drink and then we'll read this. From the tiny lab at Terminus Titus. From, there should be a comma there, surely. From the tiny lab at Terminus, Tithus orchestrated the network. All over Antarctica, from Drishnaya to Casey, from Dumont d'Urville to Mizu, Mizuho, from Bird to Amundsen Scott to Borger, families were seated cross legged around the nearly invisible glow of mass produced Pico circuits. By one and twos, by families and by communities, the groups linked up with one another. Okay. All right, that's that's all you get. So the Antarcticans are linked up by the Pico circuits or whatever. Good. All right, we're crawling forward back to Med Ten. No, Homer. No, more a general message again. All right then. I guess this is the this is the gameplay aspect of this experience. So, why would I want to skip it? Vegas Silent Download Eight. All right, let's see. I tend to be quite um. Fantastical rendering, so let's see what this is about. Another data crystal failure there. Homer requests Vega silent download. Wanda had never left the ship. She had looked out with subtle eyes and saw the huge energy pump endlessly cycling, but she had never ventured out. With Peter beside her, somehow holding her hand, she now floated out, away from the warm iron womb of the ship. She knew how to find herself in space without reference points, and she helped him, who felt fear near to panic at this odd separation from a recognisable body. So she she helped him with his 
panic at being ethereal. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that that contributes to the overall... Okay, it was something. I suppose as we run out of facts to uncover in these databases, um, the things that we discover become less and less um, motivating to uh, to the overall drama of what's going on. Um, they're definitely subordinate to what home is creating. Right, well in history we do have anomaly summary, stroke social effects. Um, so is this going back to the um, attempted created panic? Okay, data crystal failure. Anomaly summary, social effects. The anomaly was growing in public awareness. Children were no longer singing of their fear of the ants. Thank goodness for that. Now their songs were about the anomaly. That vast engine of destruction, larger than solar systems, munching its way through space-time toward poor defenceless Earth. The anomaly was a boogeyman, the golem, the undead vampire rising from the dark coffin of space to drain Earth life. This is what? Is this a historical entry, did you say? Um, uh, the dark coffin of space to drain Earth's lifeblood. Oh no, there is, okay. It's a great dark ghost, the anomaly, a terrible sight that no one can see, and it's coming to get us, you and me. But the day had come when Peter and the others were ready, and still the anomaly was only a charred spectre, a distant wraith without form or substance. So the migration began. So the migration did begin, you admit it. Yes. Okay, well surely that's the breakthrough we needed. Confirmation, right? That the migration ha happened? Oh, oh, Homer's got a, a direct message for us. That's interesting. And the, the things are hidden. Oh no, I didn't read the, oh no. Oh, here we go. The effect has not been described, yet it must have created the kind of group emotion people once felt attending the dramatic rituals of some ancient religions, or a particularly powerful concert or theatrical presentation. Surely they lost themselves in some real sense in the slowly growing Scion field. It may not have been like that at all. I would like to feel that it was a rapture, though that it was an event so grand that people wanted to be caught up. In it, Peter had once asked Thatcher if he thought the people of Antarctica would want to go, would want to be a part of this adventure. Right, so Homer says there's a file ready. Um, it's very unusual that Homer jumps in while you're in the middle of a another database or something. Okay. All right, well, we've unlocked another history entry, the Flint Report Summary Stroke Kamikaze 1. So Kamikaze is the um, Anders Flint proposition. Um, about the, um, the possible effects of what Peter's doing. There was no significant resistance to Kamikaze, no backlash. People saw what might be happening as the field grew, and they naturally, it seems, put down what they were doing and joined it. Those in the sea returned to the surface, feeling the pull of the field. Those deep in the ice or exploring the mountains found a place to sit, and they sat, melding effortlessly into the invisible aurora that was growing over the pole. Titus provided a link to Peter, who was the bridge to wander. Okay, right, so... Psychic bridge between the power source where Wanda is and Peter um, on Earth in Antarctica, and the people of Antarctica are all uh, creating kind of a um, psychic social network. Interesting. It's, I mean, it's kind of got 
a metaphorical layer for the internet, which, um, yeah, uh, t to a greater extent, this um, uh, this game predates. Although obviously, computer networks were were definitely operational um, in 1986, but um, not the internet as we would come to know it shortly after. So that's interesting. I wonder if there's anything else anywhere here for us. Okay, just going to check in in case there's any new characters. No. Fair enough, it would seem to be very late to be adding characters. Alright, nothing in geography by the looks of it. Uh, so, central processing and then back to home. No, nothing there. Okay, home where it is. This was quite a quick run through, relatively speaking. Okay, narrative two, T again. So, Tithus is that, do we think? Ants have always been explorers, that just said. Antarctica was founded by explorers, and when it became a political entity on its own, its people were still explorers. They will want to go. Oh, well, that's just an echo of what we've read elsewhere. Um, two home narrative one things. Okay, let's see what these are. I have the hollows. I have watched them more than once. Peter was there, then he was not. It was not dramatic, merely startling, yet no one else reacted. They knew where he was. Okay, so Peter Peter gets raptured into the eleventh dimension. I mean, there's no way this is not going to be an anticlimax, given how many hours of reading we've spent building up this mystery of what happened. Um, I can't imagine the, the game's going to pull out anything to to really top this. From time to time, I, Homer, was called upon to tell a story or two, having no knowledge of these events. I was so young then, so innocent. Okay. Okay, narrative two, Peter DeVore. Is this the, uh, no? Maybe it is. Seated in his own group, deep inside a terminus, Peter suddenly vanished. No one moved, no one cried out in alarm. They sat with the same expressions of calm joy they'd had since they started. But Peter was no longer there. Okay, this is very fragmentary at the moment. I think we need, if you want to cap it off, I think we need the, the grand overview, really, don't we? That's it, isn't it? Mm, you're definitely eking this out, Homer. Alright, I'm going to go for another run for this episode, I think. Okay, nothing there. Silic. Hey, we've got a Silic download nine. Of course, we have. Okay, take crystal failure. He was with Wanda. They approached the portal. Together, 
they diverted a small portion of the portal's energy, pumped it back along the bridge with the pole. Suddenly Laren was gone, and her child Petros, and Shem, then one by one, then in twos and threes, the others vanished. Okay, it's happening. We're, we're migrating. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, two more things here. Flint report summary, Kamikaze 2. So it's crystal failure. Flint report summary, stroke Kamikaze. And as Flint worked hard, he proved out the God's Wind effect. Kamikaze, he said, was inevitable. The Intercorp Council met in regular session, still unaware, even as late as the spring of 2093, that the migration had already begun. It was only then, it was only when Flint's team finally built detectors for the Scion field, based on the century-old equations of Ditmore Seminal Gad, better known as Mentor, that the council grew alarmed. They pumped all the power of the great Novyamir Tokamak near Vladivostok into the detector, which responded immediately to a very strong field around the pole and then the council met in emergency session. Alright, well, it's, I mean, the momentum of the story is that they're not going to be able to do anything about this, so if that was the case, could we just, could we just say that? Can that just be narratively stated? We'll get a purple and green data crystal failure this time. Okay, this is Terminus Hollow Report, Historical Archive, Ref, uh, hash 984787. In an hour, Terminus was empty. The hollows continued to record for another 24 hours, but nothing appeared, nothing moved. The lighting switched off automatically. All the systems were reduced to standby. Darkness fell. Elsewhere it happened more slowly. Life continued on the globe, and people were unaware, as yet, that something so momentous had begun. In the cities of Antarctica, people entered the field, or left it to continue their lives, only to return later. The field ebbed, flowed, ebbed again. A few people here and there vanished, were replaced by others. Were replaced by others? Antarctica was cut off from the rest of the world, and those who spoke for double A with Geneva or Buenos Aires, with Wellington or Cape Town or Sri Lanka, said nothing of these disappearances. The ants had always been explorers. The earth turned still. The moon went through her phases. A still silent face turned to Mother Earth. The LP5s thrived, untouched as yet by the field, or by the bind wars now dwindling away. Voice and hollow and data traffic flowed still. WorldNet continued to monitor. Alright, so you do you do have data from the migration. So why why are we getting this now? Other than narrative convenience. Just checking with my support again, although I don't think any new named characters have been mentioned though. No. What's Homer saying? Homer has a file already, okay. So we won't get any more than that out of Homer unless we, you know, trigger a, an emergency entry reading. Mm -hmm. All right, central processing will be our last recourse. Yeah, nothing there. Okay, well, we're up to date so far. As far as we can tell. Um, Homer. It sounds like things have things have happened. Um, yeah. Is this the? Yeah, this is the most recent one. Okay, read and save all. 
uh, Regent Sable's probably not happy, I imagine. Or maybe Regent Sable's finally going to migrate. Is there any protection at all? Sable asked. Mines? Undersea installations? The LP5s? Kamikaze will sweep the solar system. Flint said. The field down there is growing stronger by the day. Surely there are people who do not want to go. Aleph chewed her lower lip, upset that her plan would not have time to work, that she would lose Regent in the end, that the threat she thought she had invented had taken on life and was sweeping away her world. Containment? Regent asked. Can we confine this effect to the pole? We won't miss the ants, not much. Their technologies are good, but we can live without them. Flint shrugged his heavy shoulders. I'm a mathematician, Protector, not a magician. We could try to create a counterfield, a negative scion field of some kind, if we can find people who are committed, at the deepest psychological levels, to staying here. Do it! Sable ordered. Someone must stay, otherwise, how will the race return? Um, I think the race is run, to use your own terminology there, Regent. Okay, uh, narrative one, Homer, talking about how excited they are about telling stories. That was a question few people asked, and none answered. I suspect not, because everybody's disappeared, apart from me, the astronaut. Okay, more story, more Regent Sable. Sable and the council worked feverishly. He snapped at Aleph, then finally turned his back on her altogether. She went away somewhere, to Narvik on the Norwegian coast, and brooded. She lost interest in her sociometrics, switched them off, forgot them. She began studying the ancient religions, then abandoned them. She grew interested in Peter's life, and started calling up his data. Twice Regent tried to call her, but she wouldn't answer, and he stopped trying. Brilliant. Um, I think that reflects the commitment uh, in that relationship. Aleph Shabana ran her sociometric evaluations. The genealogical databases searched carefully, sifting a million factors a second for the right population. Within two months, a list containing 204 million 975,607 names was compiled. Were these, Sable wanted to know, the best of the world's peoples? The intelligent, the talented, the creative, were these the people with will and purpose? No, the computers told him. These were ordinary people. Some good, some not so good, some more or less intelligent, more or less talented, mature, creative, purposeful. They were neither the best nor the worst. They were people, that's all. They'll have to do, he said. Okay, well let's leave it there. That's um, strange. That is strange. Uh, I, I do kind of like leaving us on that narrative point. How fun. All right. Well, I don't know. I don't know how much more there is to go. It feels like it's wrapping up, but I, I can never be too sure. So we will be back for another episode. Uh, please do join me then. I hope I hope you're enjoying our journey. Um, and until we see each other again, take care. Bye bye.